Welcome back to the Mining Pod. We got another week's news roundup for you guys here. 10 minutes in and out here about all mining news. Maybe a little Bitcoin, actually a little bit of Bitcoin to start the week off here. We're going to talk about Custodia, then move over to Montana Senate's passing of some new regulations around Bitcoin mining, positive regulations, I should add, and then finish up with that fun story out of Massachusetts with someone mining Bitcoin in the crawl space of a school, I believe it was. Pretty funny story. We'll get to that at the end of the show. But before we begin, Matt, how you doing? I'm good. So succinct. Okay, give us a headline. Give us a scoop. So the Federal Reserve Board basically rejected uh, Custodia's bid um, to be like a fe- federally uh, supervised banking institution. It's kind of like a stamp uh, of approval to be kind of under their guise, right? Um, Custodia is a crypto sort of neobank led by Caitlin Long, I believe is her name. Um, It was really bright, very interesting person to listen to and speak. The story itself um, is basically that they have been applying. This is their second time around where they've applied to be under supervision um, and they're rejected once again. So I'll throw it over to you. What do you think? That was a good summary. No, yeah, this is a, a bummer for Custodia. As you mentioned, they tried to get through the finish line last month it was rejected then they applied again or uh, applied again to have it considered again and then it was declined to be considered once again by the federal reserve board so there's lots of different new ones within the story the larger overarching story here of course is the fact that these crypto neo banks really want access to these federal accounts they don't just want to be like these commercial level banks uh, and they don't really want to work behind the scenes like we see with silvergate or a signature bank which have typically been the two most friendly banks for crypto. There's been a lot of pressure on banks within the U.S. to not service crypto customers or to offboard them. We've seen like a lot of like the infamous tweets from like Chase and other companies are like, yeah, we don't want to touch crypto. It's that led to Custodia over the last few years trying to get themselves a Federal Reserve uh, seat, if you will. They want to be a member of the Federal Reserve banking system and have access to Federal Reserve accounts. That would be a boon for the industry. Uh, they're based out of Wyoming, and Custodia has been using a lot of the rules in Wyoming in order to build this bank up. Uh, it's a huge loss that they didn't get this through the finish line, and I know that they've taken issue with the Federal Reserve over this, even going to court, because they think that they have the right and ability to get these accounts. That being said, it is really, really hard to start a bank in the U.S. It takes a lot of cash, takes a lot of capital, it takes a lot of human knowledge just to like, get across the finish line. So. This might take a few more years and hopefully like they can like push her on the court side to get this done because the industry definitely needs this. As I mentioned, uh, Silvergate and Signature have been like the two biggest ones for people using crypto. I uh, believe Silvergate right now is the most shorted stock on Wall Street just because of its crypto ties and everything that happened with FTX. And Signature, I believe, also recently offboarded a lot of crypto customers. So there's not a lot of great banking relationships out there and Custodia getting this charter would be huge deal i guess so i don't know if it's technically a charter it might just be like some sort of license there's a lot of different nomenclature for all these things that i'm not too interested in learning about okay we can leave that one there unless you have any follow-up and we can talk about well Montana. i was gonna say you can't exactly see the application so it's tough to say like what custodia actually has set up but the fed and kind of their their release statement cited um that there wasn't kind of sufficient risk management frameworks in place you mentioned FTX. I have an inkling that this is just sort of alluding to a lot of the bigger blowups um, from kind of centralized institutions in the broader crypto space. And I think, unfortunately, Custodia is getting some backlash from that. This may have been one of those scenarios where they were kind of rejected before it even started. And I hope that's not the case, but um, it definitely has potential to be there. I wish everything was out in the open so we could give a full assessment. It's not what the Federal Reserve is known for. Yeah, just some follow-up commentary there. It's crazy how the companies that are doing things correctly, like Custodia, are going through the whole process, raising money, trying to get these charters, trying to get these accounts correctly. They're the ones being punished, while a lot of these other companies running around launching Ponzi's are okay. Seems to be how things are with crypto, though. Okay, we'll turn to Montana. Montana Senate passes bill protecting crypto miners. That's according to Coindesk. Uh, essentially, this bill states that there's new protections for crypto miners on the uh, on the state level to protect against local governments going after crypto miners, including 
home miners or jacking up energy rates. Essentially also saying that just because you are a crypto miner doesn't mean that your energy bill can be um, discriminated against. We've seen that occur in a few different states, uh, particularly New York and Washington state. So this is a big boon for uh, the industry if it continues to be passed in different states. That being said, Montana right now doesn't seem to be like anti-crypto, right? They seem to be pretty pro-crypto. I know that that hard inside that Marathon used to be in is actually soon to be back up and running, or at least it looks like they're they're getting some more crypto miners back in that hardened location. So I think overall, Montana is a pretty crypto-friendly state. Yeah, a note on this story is that it made it through the the Senate uh, of the state, which is which is huge, and it's now over to the House for approval. So hopefully, it actually does go through. But I mean, clarity on um, on some tax law, I think, is pretty important here. Crypto uses a payment is not subject to be uh, additionally taxed, which is good for the people in Montana, and it also protects at home mining. Um, which is cool as well. I mean, as we've kind of discussed over time, mining is is a state's rights sort of thing. And I think it's going to continue to be a state's rights uh, issue. And uh, I think Montana is kind of planting a flag here um, and really putting some positive policy forth. And uh, kudos to, I believe, uh, Dennis Porter, uh, your pal, uh, for helping push this one through. And drafts. Yeah, this mirror is a similar bill, I believe, that was passed by Mississippi Senate about a week ago or two weeks ago. Uh, all these things obviously still need to go through like the house side of things and then get signed off by the governor, I think for both the piece of legislation, but it does look like the Satoshi action fund is moving forward pretty aggressively. There's been some nice videos even about this, uh, from different state senates that Dennis has been speaking at or constituents at the Satoshi action fund, which we love to see because I think it is a state's rights issue. Okay. We will leave that one there and move on from the great state of Montana to the lesser great state of Massachusetts because they're clamping down on Bitcoin mining. This is a great story. Uh, apparently a town employee was accused of operating the cryptocurrency mine in the crawl space. A former Cohasset town employee is accused of using a school crawl space to operate a cryptocurrency mine. The former assistant facilities director is due in court today. Police were called to Cohasset's middle high school in December after computers were found in a crawl space there. They say the suspect was using the school's electricity to create digital currency. He's charged with electricity, fraud, and vandalizing a school. He's being charged with stealing about $18,000 in electricity from Cohasset Middle and High School, uh, and he's being charged for that. Apparently, he did not show up for his trial yesterday, so there's actually a warrant out for his arrest. But this is a lovely story. I, I love these stories from the bear market. Someone's just trying to get that Bitcoin in. They're stealing electricity to do it. Your thoughts? This is a super entertaining story, and I'm with you. But like, what what A6 are these? They are definitely ancient. <laughs> They've been yeah, through really old. If they're not as high. Uh, Fully dusted over, uh, likely not cash flow positive, but it's a great offense to uh, them claiming that an IT management professor is a cryptocurrency expert and the way that uh, he described um, that crypto mining is a way in which the network that supports a cryptocurrency is kept secure. And I think we can all agree, and it's very clear, that network security is totally based off of uh, node operators and their communication channels, right? Well, definitely, maybe, sort of. Okay, we're not going to get into that topic <laughs> on the show today. It is, you know, Come on. I mean, like, right. more or less, yeah, but also slight nuance there. This is a great story. Uh, I encourage everyone to go look at the pictures as well. He's got, like, some very jerry-rigged home mining setups with, like, these air tubes of pump out the hot air he's got coolers in there to like dampen the sound i don't even know what miners he's using but yeah this piece has it all it's a it's a mainstream media piece right so they got the solving complex math problems they got the switzerland comparison here for bitcoin energy usage all the things that like don't matter for the story the guys are stealing electricity why are you taking a shot at bitcoin but they always do that because they need to fill air time but yeah great story and we're gonna see more of these right like we're gonna see more of the uh, we're going to see more of the, like, the noise pollution stories. We're going to see, see more of the electricity ceiling stories. Uh, you know, the, the cliche stories. It's too noisy. You forget. It's too noisy. Pollution. Shut it down. You're stealing energy. Shut it down. Okay. Well, speaking of shutting down, let's shut down this. Been here about 10, 15 minutes. Matt, great to see you. We will see you again next week. Thanks for listening to The Mining Pod. 
give us a like or a subscription on YouTube if you enjoyed watching this or give us a five-star review in your favorite podcasting platform of choice. It really means the world to us. For those of you who reached out about ordinals and getting some inscriptions, we are hard at work working on those right now, designing each and every single one. So it's going to take a little bit because yes, we are actually drawing them and creating them ourselves over here at Mining Pod. So we'll get to you when we can. Thank you for reaching out about them. Okay, Matt, see you next week. Cheers.